quiet, please. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the second day of the 43rd Ryder Cup. And this is match number two, a four-ball match between the European team represented by Shane Lowry and Terrell Hatton. Against the United States of America team represented by Tony Finau and Harris English. Finau and English won four and three Three's yesterday. On the tee representing Europe, Terrell Hatton. And just to give you the perspective of how important this session is, the next four and a half hours for the European side. Since this five session 28 point format was put in place, 1979. This is the largest lead after the third session. Nobody's had as big a margin as the U.S. does, up six points, so they can make this really impossible for the European side if they have a big afternoon. Europe has to be good in these four balls. Here we go. In time. Now on the tee, representing Europe, Shane Lowry. Lowry played just once, as you see, in his Ryder Cup debut yesterday. Paired with Rory McIlroy, they lost to Finau in English, four and three. Just on a really good line with the helping win. The carries it could be really near the front edge of the green. Oh yeah. Wow. Just a massive tee shot. Wow. First on the tee, representing the United States of America, Tony Fina. Well, sometimes you can't get it teed up. You go, man, the guy's really uptight. But you saw Tony. He just kind of had a smile and a laugh and played to the crowd. How aggressive will his line be? 350 to the front edge. Downwind. He's headed a bit right. It's not going to near the front edge. He's going to need to get down on the line it's on, I believe. John, it worked out okay. Now on the team representing the United States of America, Harris English. Made his Ryder Cup debut yesterday with a win. How often do Ryder Cup matches come down to big putts? That's a great guy to have over a big putt. Side as well. Good drive there, John. So, four pretty sweet drives with that noise and energy around the first tee. The female, yeah. His hand shaking to put it back on the tee. Nah, not a bit. Come on, I want a little bit more. <laughs> Give me some. Playing to the home crowd. Uh, you know, just trying to wipe the slate clean coming out this morning and, you know, just continue what we've been doing and have fun and, and um, keep playing great. These guys are having a good time. I, I guess from what you saw earlier, I didn't I didn't uh, see the antics on the first tee, but I heard uh, a couple of the guys were having a good time and uh, they're loose and they're ready to play. All right, Steve, thanks for the time. Let's thanks, go on one. Thanks, yeah. buddy. Steve Stricker has yep. uh, set that tone as well. As a captain, thank you, Jimmy. So you saw Hatton's first as he knocked it uh, in good shape up there on the green. Of course, his partner's up there on the green with a long putt. And John Wood, Harris English will play next. Exactly. It's three three balls in good shape on the tee and one ball in unbelievably great shape off the tee. Harris will be next to play. 64 yards. He's going to have Terrell, Terrell run up and mark his ball since his just stopped just short on his line. 
And with this much help, you're going to see some big skips on this second shot. So, Justin, I, I would think most of the guys from this distance will be landing somewhere around the front edge. Tyrrell actually landed a little hair short of the front edge. Yeah, and there's a little slope that, that kicks towards this flag there around the front part of the green. Uh, and not far enough back to really spin the ball. So really got to control control that first bounce and just how far it skips. And the wind has really picked up from this morning, Justin. It is howling right now. And it is straight downwind here. Just a chip shot. Landing it well short, hoping it runs out. All right. Cool. Just grabbed a little bit soon. So, John, you talked about the wind. Just take it from a caddy's perspective in terms of talking to your player. Because we've seen wind a lot of it this week, but we've also seen it shift and clock multiple different directions. Yeah, it's something you talk about before the rounds. Gonna go up and mark that one as well. But I'm sure, sure you're talking about the different strategies on the different holes with the way the wind has turned throughout yeah. the last couple of days. Yeah, exactly right. It's those key holes out here where you're gonna tell your player, hey, on five today it's gonna be straight into you off the tee. Just so when they get there, they're not surprised in playing a shot they weren't prepared for. It's a very fairly similar win to what they practiced in on Wednesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. Cutty spin on that. Needs to release. We'll have two looks at it. Lowry with an eagle putt. Well, he's protecting a little bit that downwind component on the first screen now. And as we said, it's a relatively short hole at 364 yards on the card. So uh, that plus all the folks around the first green, the first tee, you can hear all the noise from back there. They're few, but their fervor is appreciated. We do miss the volume, and I mean that in numbers, not just the sound, the decibels of the European fans at that first tee scene and all the way around the golf course, too. Yeah, and they're those European fans are very creative with their songs and chants, and a lot of those probably originated in some pubs back uh, in the UK mm -hmm. and across the Atlantic. Well, this format, you know, when you can, you have to be aggressive and go make birdies. And we saw Steve, La we saw Shane Lowry do that in 2019 when he won the Open, and it's a great first thought to have a tee shot end up in a place like this. Straight most of the way, about halfway there, it's going to start turning left. And actually back uphill a touch at the end. Two American players went over for a quick look at how that was going to run out at the end there. The similar lines coming up for the putt still ahead here at the first. Just having him put a mark on it just to keep it there. Justin, we've Hatton here, but obviously we've got other players who will be coming up who played this morning, turned back around and played this afternoon. Just talk about the shift in mindset and approach from foursomes when you go back, get a quick bite to eat, maybe change clothes and head out for the afternoon session. Yeah, it's uh, this format is certainly more comfortable for every player in this field. Uh, you can kind of get into your own rhythm, although it's been interesting watching the American side. I haven't seen a lot of, you know, times when both players have been reading putts. Sometimes you'll even see that in this format if one player you know is kind of out of the hole or whatever you might see um, you know players coming together to read putts haven't seen that on the American side so uh, I would think because of that much more familiar much more comfortable in this format just playing their own game reactions the next group gets to the first team meantime this group with the birdie putts English Start with Lowry, and they're so close. And then with Dune back behind one. Don't need a grandstand. It's natural. Everybody can stand there, and they already on their feet. Raise a fist to Harris English. 
Justin, just like yesterday, with this much wind, I bet you see very few concessions today. A little mishit, it can move your putter head around, it can move your body around. I agree, John, with the, with the wind picking up, the greens, the whole locations were changed. Well, there was a little... Uh, yeah. did, did Lowry do a little bit of what Justin Thomas did earlier? 267 front, hard right to left wind. He's going to need to start this well to the right and let it work back. And I think his partner, Trail Hatton, has laid it up in the left rough. Mm -hmm. Starting on a good line, turning right at it. Good line if it's enough. Oh, just shy of that. We'll... Oh, just ricochets down, and that might be against the back edge of that bunker. And Harris English set to play his third. 116 total. He's just releasing out to the right, and it should spin left as it lands. Good looking shot. Excellent shot. You heard him chanting Harry on the first tee. Two. And Hatton, third shot. 102. Starting right, trying to turn over a little bit. Might need a hop. A uh, lovely shot. Harris English in there close to the U.S. up uh, back, I should say, at the first that John Ron Birdie was conceded. So it'll be up to the U.S. to make a longer putt. Let's uh, take you through the steps for the other two players here at the second. And now he's trundled off to the left. Finau was in good position. Yeah, I'm almost feeling that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I just, I like playing pin with this. It's a little hole shot. You good with that? Yeah, I mean, if anything, we play one or two more just for spin. Okay. I mean, we saw Harry's. I mean, this okay. is a spin number with that. Okay. Even with this one? Yeah, I agree. I like it. Good work there from Mark Urbanic. Allowing for some spin and a little hurt. This is 93 yards. Good line, very high. Just took it too deep. Rafi now 32, making his second Ryder Cup appearance. Captain's pick as well back in 2018. Played four ball with Brooks Kepka and lost both of those. So as we're going to break after one green, I wasn't sure if Lowry was, in fact, going back to it, what Justin Thomas did, this was a close one, but as they said, it's windy. and make these guys make it. And watch what Lowry does after the putt is made. Kind of, well, yeah, it was inside the leather, huh? You should have given it to me. Maybe a little good-natured, maybe not. This was earlier, if you weren't with us this morning. Justin Thomas thought he should have been given that putt. Same kind of deal. Kind of looked up, and there you go. I wonder if Lowry was watching TV, saw that, returned the favor. I wouldn't be the Ryder Cup if there weren't, uh, you know, a little chippiness out there on the golf course. And we settled back down to the second green, John, and look at Tony Finau stepping in for his birdie look. Finau is away. Uh, I'm almost surprised they don't have Harris putt first right here. Only, you know, inside two feet, get it done, put it in the hole, and let them go. As a team, you have that option if you're away. Yeah, it is the team honor, and so... Harris English would be able to go ahead and putt without playing out a turn. And Finau certainly took a run at that. Hatton on a very similar line. Didn't get much of a read there. That ball had so much pace, it didn't take any break whatsoever. Well, that point of that strategy almost magnified with how good a putter Harris English is. Yeah, I, as mean, well. I mean, him making it is kind of a foregone conclusion. So a little surprised that the American side didn't uh, take advantage of that opportunity. Might be a little bit of inexperience there, Justin. I'm not sure they entered, they even entered their mind. This should go a little left to right here for Hatton. This was first English putting for birdie. Remember, Finau is away, but again, you control the balls aside. So English makes his. And Lowry stepping in after that for his putt. Oh. Justin to tie the hole. 
So they go to three, and here's David Ferrer. Thank you, Mike. Third hole today, 198 yards. And Terrell Hatton on the team. Six iron David starting right at it, but turning over. This is going to need to get down. Oh, it doesn't need a kick left. Oh. And that is done toward the water, whether or not it went in. Looks like it may have. Very dangerous flag here today. And uh, all the par threes here at Whistling Straits are along the edge of Lake Michigan, two in uh, one direction, two in the other. So we've got a lot of crosswinds here today. The wind out of the west is going to be blowing this ball towards that lake. And there is the wind, 18 miles an hour. We've had some gusts up to 27, 35 in this area. Six iron for Larry. Oh, wonderful shot. All the way to the back edge, though. With his partner in trouble, that's a good one. Well, there's uh, some unnecessary dancing here. There should be a penalty for that, I would have thought. Paul Casey in the middle of the European contingent. <laughs> you know. <laughs> One of the things I, I frequently get asked as we watch FINA here on number three is the Europeans seem to have a better time than the Americans. Well, it's because they've been winning. Okay, a little short there. Club short from FINA. A lot easier to be cheerful when you're in front, but I, I must say I'm very impressed, Mike, with... Uh, these Europeans, they, they're still having a great time, even six points behind. It is fun to see, isn't it? It's such an amazing, unique event. There's no event that'll make you feel as nervous, and there's no event that's more fun than this one. The atmosphere is just, and it's, it's amazing, and it's instantaneous from the very first tee shot of the event. Take a look at our top tracer technology powered by Top Golf. Very dangerous. Well, more than likely caught the Oh, no, it didn't. Also in the leg. David, you saw that observer down there. I was talking to one of the observers. They were told to carry tees in their pockets so they could mark where balls went into hazards. And Tony Fino from miles away here. Be an excellent two putt. You can see Barron some 30 feet there. Oh, picks up speed. And that was a really good effort, but a lot of work left there for his par three. And Lowry for birdie. This to win the hole. Oh, and he runs it right in there. Big fella from the west of Ireland, well used to these windy conditions. Larry and Hatton, one up after three. Gary Coke joins us now, and he's watching the play at the fourth. Yeah, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Gerald yeah. Hatton's second shot is well left of the green, and as he's trying to get down the steep slope to see what... Yep, that's an indication of just how steep the edges of some of these greens are. This one hanging right along the edge of Lake Michigan. I like the way he just rode it out there. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's no sense in stopping. All right. Let's see if he can hack it out onto the green somehow. Nope. I'll so uh, the Europeans in big trouble there as Lowry's already played three shots and he's off yeah. the green as well. Well, let's. <laughs> 
I assume, Justin, that it's easier going up, but we'll see. It takes some strategy, doesn't it, Gary? Yeah, yes, it does. Uh, I'm the guy on the air who's missed the most greens. I can tell you firsthand. You know, where I live, we have chair lifts for things like that. <laughs> Toe rope, maybe? Uh, I think we're finding it a little more humorous than he is. All right, so this fourth hole has been uh, a terror uh, throughout this uh, Ryder Cup. Uh, in the three previous sessions, there's only been one birdie made here. That was by John Rahm and Sergio Garcia in the morning foursomes uh, on Friday. As Finau now tries to play his third shot. Straight downwind, almost impossible to stop this. Yep, that'll catch the slope and that'll work away from the hole. So Harris English just off the edge of the green there in two uh, in really good shape as the other players have all played three. Interestingly, uh, Justin, Harris English only made one birdie in uh, yesterday's four ball win by Finau and English. We know what happened with Dustin in 2010. Four. Yeah, that's the fourth shot for Hatton. Oh! Oh, that would have been some par. So that'll be a conceded bogey. And this thing really came close. <laughs> and just earlier, Shane Lowry had this lengthy putt for par. He missed the fairway to the left. Had to uh, just pitch out. Third shot left of the green. So the Euros are in with a five. Harris English now has two putts to win the hole. And uh, John, indication of just how difficult this par four plays. Uh, the hole's already been won three times uh, in four ball <laughs> with pars. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me with this I breeze. I mean, this wind is just brutal on this hole. It's so hard to hit the fairway, and then it's so hard to hit the green, and then the green's tough. So triple threat there, and this putt is no bargain two putt, Gary. It's got some right to left early, back left to right at the end, and then it'll run away from him at the hole. So. No bargain two putt here. All right, lower right. That's speed for his par at the third. He leaves it short. So the American team in with a bogey there. All right, let's see if English can manage to get down in two here. Just under 50 feet. Once again, it appears we've got the ball oscillating on the green with this heavy wind. Last thing you want to do. <laughs> and it's hard for the cameraman to hold the camera steady, too, in this breeze. Statistically, the best putter on the U.S. team. 12th strokes game putting this past season on the PGA Tour. to three and back here at four Mike uh, Harris English looking over this par putt a chance to win the hole and get this match back to tied Gary they did not cut the greens in between the rounds so you're gonna have to watch for that adjustment if players can make it I almost, it looks like it should be super fast going down that hill the last 10 feet but it really didn't go same procedure they followed yesterday. They did not mow the greens in between sessions. They did move the hole locations. And yeah. they're a little tougher this afternoon, as you would expect. Well, uh, hole will be halved with bogey fives. And, uh, and Hatton will remain one up. John Woodland said check in on this match with Lowry and Hatton one up. All four guys had to lay up because of the wind into the into their faces off the tee. Two balls on the green already. One for Europe, one for the U.S. Neither great birdie putts. This is Harris from 97 yards. We need to spin back. 
It's so difficult to judge that wind. Justin, let's go back to this hole. This is such an interesting design of this hole. Zigzaggy. It, it is, yeah. Zigzaggy serpentine hole here like at the it. fifth. Uh, most players, because this tee shot playing back into the wind today, so everybody will be going out here to the left-hand side. And then from there, boy, you've really got to commit to what you're doing. If you can get there, it's a very shallow target. Uh, I think we'll see a number of players playing it out to the right, either laying up or even with fairway woods, but not really trying to hit the green, just playing it out there to the right, whole location on the left-hand side. So anything out there to the right leaves you plenty of green to work with. And Lowry third. Just got to see, because of the zigzag nature of this hole, Plus the wind kind of coming across it really works in two different ways on you on the same hole. It does it changes directions. It's so difficult to hit short irons when you've got so much wind. But it mostly play of Shane Lowry that has helped the Europeans go one up in this match. Tyrrell Hatton here with a birdie putt at the fifth. It's par five with the challenge of the wind today. That mostly westerly wind. Let's see, we're we gonna go good, good here. All right, we will. Yeah, this fifth hole, much different hole, much tougher than it was yesterday. It's Harris English, the last to play. I mentioned the sixth short par four, playing 330 today. Wind hard off the left, playing a front tee, full location right. over on the front left part of the green. He was good when he hit it. Catches the upslope, they're short of it. Now this is gonna <laughs> funnel down. What a shot. Great drive on the short par four by English. He'll have an eagle attempt to try to tie this match. All right, Tony Fina, I see a couple of balls there, that little small bunker. Back into the wind. Good lie, pretty basic bunker shot. Stab it and stop. Mm -hmm. Just the conversation here here of how to treat the bunkers. Lowry's ball was right there next to him. They bring in Mark Wilson from the PGA of America, Mark. Sure, in this case, Shane Lowry's entitled to the lie and the stance that he had originally before the stroke was made by Finau. And so the bunkers raked and uh, Lowry can go ahead and play. Thank you, Mark. So good to be with you again. Mark, one of the many folks who uh, over the years have done so much with the PGA of America, especially up here in the Midwest. Uh, two very similar and very nice bunker shots. Lowry was expecting a little bit more. He looked back much like Finau did. And Tyrrell Hatton just a little bit away from where those two were. In a separate bunker and right up against the back edge of this, this bunker. I don't think he can go at the pin at all. I think he's going to try and get this out right and long. He's just got to come in so steep at it to get a clean hit. It's not bad there being jammed up against the back edge. You get offline at this golf course and there's nothing comfortable. There's nothing steady. There's nothing solid. Well, normally, you know, PG Tour players, they like being in a bunker. Right. Because right. it's completely predictable. Well, these bunkers here at Whistling Straits are anything but that. Harris English drove the green to the par for this for Eagle and to win the hole for the U.S. Judging by uh, the way things are going this afternoon, that is not going to be conceded. Yeah, uh -uh. Not, not for a second. And, and that's a couple of greens now. We saw Harris with a three putt earlier, rare for him. So it's certainly the wind factoring in here a little bit. And who knows how much that is multiplied by the pressure of the Ryder Cup. Where English's eagle putt went past, so these birdie putts become even more important. Lowry. Care of the three for the European side. A big putt since Hatton had already missed his birdie attempt. 
And now the Americans have two chances to tie. And Lowry's the one who's uh, bringing the intensity for the Europeans. So Finau for three. Similar round in that hole, and they both make three. Lowry and Hatton remain one up as they head to the seventh. Yeah, and Harris English going to flag all the way back here. Wind howling off the left. Come on, happy. John, I know Terrell Hatton is up in the crowd. Has found a spot way up in the gallery to the left there. The other three on the green. Tony Finau at the seventh for Birdie. But that leaves Lowry with this one this to win the hole John you had to win the hole but you can't get too aggressive especially with his partner basically in his pocket he's two almost in Lake Michigan so you got to be very careful with this one yeah he was careful settling for the tie and we uh, look down on the eighth green uh, John Wood Fill us in on what's going on here. Well, we got Tony Finau with about 30 feet for birdie. Beautiful second shot. Shane Lowry on the lower tier with over 50 feet for his birdie. Um, Ter Terrell Hatton has basically already hit four shots. He's got a long putt for five. I think he's actually picked it up. But this match, Gary, it, it honestly has been a two-on-one match. Shane Lowry's been incredibly impressive in this win. Uh, Terrell Hatton has hardly been in a hole, and the Americans cannot seem to find a way to... to Lessen this one lead, but uh, if they can put any pressure on him at all, I, I think they're going to be in good shape. Well, Lowry has already made four birdies in the first seven holes. So impressive stuff in these conditions. But you have to be careful with the speed here. Pretty much downhill right in that area. Over here at eight, Mike Shane Lowry has this for par. Tony Finau was unable to make his birdie putt. That was just a moment ago. So the U.S. does have two par putts to tie the hole. Harris English will be first. Johnny played a good bunker shot to get to this position. Yeah, he did. Beautiful shot. Uh, ran right past the hole. A little bit of right to left in this. Tony in there a little bit closer. Great look down from above at the hole they call on the rocks. <laughs> Easy to see why. And you need one after you're done. <laughs> Ooh. That's not his best stroke. By any means, started left immediately off the putter. Finau. Yeah, here at eight to tie the hole. And uh, it's a pretty short putt, two feet, eight inches. And oh, some of these shorter ones, uh, guys are being made to putt today, Justin. Oops. It's over at the ninth for par. To tie the hole is Lowry. He has been impressive. He has been, and he's the one who's really amped up kind of the fervor and the emotion. And uh, again, he gives it the kind of the, hey, that might have been in the leather. And John Wood with this group. This has been the Shane Lowry show so far this afternoon. He has been so impressive playing this strong wind. He understands it better than anybody. It's, and Harris, who's normally very dependable on the greens, has really struggled. This needs to get a little right. It's in the same area as Lowry's ball. He just won't climb up from that angle. And over at the 10th is Hatton coming up on the short par four. This might be the best chance to get it close from back here. Been one winning hole all match long. 
That's impressive. This Terrell Hatton can play some shots now. That is a heck of a shot. He's been clutch on the greens when he's had opportunities. And Finau for birdie from just short of the green. He's got two putts inside him, one European, one American for birdie. Tony made six birdies yesterday in his debut here at Whistling Straits. Cooled off a little bit, just one so far today. Good putt, though, but it'll give Hatton an opportunity, who hit a nice one up there. Shane Lowry, who had that fiery start with four birdies in the first six holes, looking for another one here. Zinger, I, you always struck me as a great wind player, and Lowry has been phenomenal in 30 mile an hour winds today. What is the key? Well, Controlling your trajectory is a big key. Having the ball leave it like you want takes two. The caddy has a real effect as well. A positive effect. Lowry wow. just in the center. Yes! Yay! I love it. What a putt. Boy, these guys are amped up and they need to be. This match cannot flip back to the Americans. That's their biggest lead so far. Two up. And this is just the second winning hole, both by the European team. Yes! We'll see. Yes! Well, you know, Lowry can keep it rolling. Yeah, hitting it in the wind is one thing, putting in the wind is another. And uh, Lowry, when he won the Open Championship, played in really the worst conditions imaginable, didn't he? Yep, the Harris English, though, lining up for the tie. Harris needs to make this. He's had, like you said, Woody, maybe a little struggle on the greens here this afternoon. He really has. His speed has not been on at all. I think it's the wind is really affecting him. Well, the wind can do it. I mean, it's really uh, a unnerving feeling not knowing if the putter has going to wobble on the way back. How about five birdies in 10 holes in these conditions for Lowry? Yeah. Is that any good? That, that's uh, wow. really good. In English, who was mostly a spectator alongside Tony Finau yesterday, got off to a good start with two birdies and now can contribute big time again to keep this European lead at just one. Tough Reed Zinger. It looks like it wants to fall a hair right. That wind is straight cross right to left. That's going to hold it a little straight. The wind will definitely hold it. Just as a player, you have to be convinced you know what it's going to do. That's lower, Harris at the top. Lower right, Garcia for birdie to win the night. Just walks it in casually to tie the hole with a birdie. Good confidence stroke. Harris Nine. English 146. Lowry's already found the front edge of the green. Tony Finau is in the front right bunker. Gets it up over the lip. Hair lost to the knees, might need to get down a hair. Wanted the kick to the right, didn't get it. The 11th across win, like most of the holes out here today, really awkward. You can see the flag up on top left of your screen there, straight across from the left. Just one, 124 for Hatton, starting left, moving towards the flag. Really good looking shot if it's the right distance. Yeah, nicely done. Back at the 11th. Terrell Hatton for a birdie and a win. The crowd getting a little rowdier as the afternoon goes goes on. Oh, and Hatton has been clutch this last couple of days. The European team two up through the 11th. Patrick Harrington appreciated that one, as did Shane Lowry. And our first look at this short par, 352 yards today. Back hole location. Wind across from the right, just 10 yards wide where the hole is cut is the green. Oh, and Tyrrell Hatton <laughs> plays a beauty. This is spectacular. What a shot to that little tiny, <laughs> tiny target. And let's take a, a 
look uh, in the neck just short of the hole. It's only six yards wide. So, Paul, one of the scariest looking short shots <laughs> I've seen in golf. We walked out there, Zing, and we said to ourselves, are you kidding? You're yeah. going to put one back here? Sure, they won't, there won't be a flag back there. Well, there's going to be two of yeah, them back there's there. There's another one that's planned. He's holding this off like it started left. Okay, gets a nice bounce. So that's how you get it into that six yard wide area. See, Pete was giving you all sorts of options. <laughs> yeah, there's the lake on the right or about a 10 foot deep pot bunker on the left. All right, Finau, ready to play, John. Two balls up there already, 152. This is nine iron for Tony. Starting it left, overcutting it. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Look out. Hang on. Oh. Just. <laughs> and there's a great look down from above at the 12th. Just hanging on the edge of Lake Michigan. Larson. Yeah. Figure out with uh, Harris and Bush what club they're going to hit. And is that intimidating? He's in here. Tom Watson used to talk about helping him, having the wind help you. It seems to me like Shane Lowry swings easy, lets the wind work the ball towards the hole. The Americans say look like they've been fighting everything, trying to hold it against this 30 mile an hour wind, and that's just too much to hit a hold. It's an intangible to be able to play in the wind, I think. You, you figure out how to let the wind be your friend or 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 try to hold it against it, but the short shot here, he needs to hit yeah. beauty. Also, my arm headed way left needs to cut a lot. I don't think it's going to be enough. And that's in that pot bunker that's about eight feet below the level of the green. And Fino has a terrible lie against mm -hmm. the collar, Gary. Yeah, so clear advantage to the Euros there. And what a scene here at the short par 3 12th. Oh, hanging off the edge, looking over the green and down at the lake. Tough bunker shot for Harris English and uh, about as good as he could do to get it to the fringe and about 12 feet from the hole. Shane Lowry should be next to play. Boy, what a difference a day or two makes. I mean, you could have surfed in that lake a couple days ago, Gary. It was yeah. really blowing. And now flat as a pancake. The wind clocked around a different direction. These guys have dealt with every conceivable wind direction this week. And it's been strong. It's be a sweet birdie. Not going to happen. All right. But, uh, his partner, Daryl Hatton, in there just over 10 feet. So. Still have a chance for a two to the Europeans. Be interesting. Be interesting to see what kind of shot Tony Finau elects to play here with that ball up against the heavier cut of the fringe. Yeah, Gary, look like he's going for that stab. I'm a little surprised Harris isn't putting first. He's on almost the same line, at least give Tony a read at it. But uh, Tony must have a good idea here. Zinger, this would have been a bellied wedge in our day. I know. He's got it behind his right foot. Uh, he's going to chop down on this thing. This is, uh, need to catch this just right. A day makes yesterday. Tony Finau six birdies in uh, his win, and uh, today just one. All right, big putt for Tyrrell Hatton. Chance to increase the lead. And boy, Gary, everybody around this green thought that chip was going in. It just looked so perfect. There was everybody standing up. It just grazed that edge. Tyrrell Hatton now with it for his second consecutive birdie has not contributed anything until the last little last hole. Now he's got a chance to make two in a row. He 
He came on strong yesterday afternoon. Saved his best uh, for the back nine. Yeah, that birdie at 18, mm -hmm. Gary, would ended up scratching out a half. You don't know how big that's going to be or could be. But here he is waking up again late in the game on Saturday. I took a look at this, Gary, again, and it looked very, very straight to me. System. He's mm -hmm. chirping away on that green. He will chirp to oh. himself, to whoever wants to take a listen. Yeah, he knows if he'd have buried that putt, it almost been an insurmountable lead. Now they still have to work. It's hard to close somebody out in these matches. Harris English right here on the first cut, John Wood. 107 total. If he lands this even 20 feet left of the hole, it's going to turn right down to it. So he's got to land this left of the hole. Can he land it on? He can. From this far, I think he can. Americans two down. Oh, what in the world? It backed up downwind from the rough. That is a shocking result. I'm sure that shocked him. Oh, it did. <laughs> Man. English and Fino have not won a single hole in this match as you look at the other guys there. Hat with a huge drive down there, 327. And now Fino's next. Almost the exact same number. Taking it a little lower. It's on a good line. It's going to. Yes. That skips up. And that's a good spot over there. That's a nice spot to putt from. Two down. All right, Lowry is next as Europe has a couple to fire in here to try to improve on this two up lead. Great chance for Europe here to make a birdie. It sure is, just 90 yards for Lowry. It's got to drain a little bit in his way, but it's not going to affect his swing at all, so not asking for any sort of a ruling. And Lowry playing very, very well. You know, you just get the feeling that Harrington wants to see another player win a match besides Garcia and Rom. Only two guys the with player a point. has. No, well, they have two and a half of the three points. Yeah! Not very good at all. Yeah! No other player on this European side besides Rom and Garcia knows what a win feels like here at Whistling Straits, and we are deep into Saturday's play. Final team session. It's amazing. All right. At the 13th, John Wood, set the scene for us. Europeans are in for par. Harris English made bogey for it, chipped it way long. Now we have uh, about a 15 foot chip shot for Lowry and about a 10 foot putt for Fee now. Little surprise he's chipping this. He only wants one thing that's a hole out. Just caught a little heavy, stuffed it. So Tony Finau will have that putt, which is for Birdie to win the hole. It was interesting, Zinger, just by body language, I could tell Mark Ur Urbanic, Tony's caddy, was trying to get him to go first when uh, Harris was Harris English was away. Uh, Tony didn't want any part of it, though. He wanted to see Lowry's chip first, and now he's just got green light a little bit left to right. Couldn't have left it in a better spot on this green. Yeah, that would have taken him, maybe it'd take him out of his routine enough. He didn't want to even take that into consideration. Exactly. I remember Tony Fina was uh, one of the lone bright spots in Paris in his first Ryder Cup. I thought it was interesting what he said after getting into the throws again here yesterday. He said, you know what? I really learned how to play in the Ryder Cup at Paris. I'm just freewheeling and having fun. And that is the kind of lighthearted approach that has been working this time around at Whistling Straits. Time pressure here on Tyrrell Hatton with his second at 14. 
Harry English. I called him Harry because the crowd's been calling him that all day. Harris English is stiff there, which looks like a conceited birdie on the way. You see his ball and boy, fourth Lowry and Hatton a long way away. Lowry's missed his birdie. English's birdie has been conceded. And so this to tie the hole now for Tyrrell Hatton. Or else the lead is gone. Come on, Tiro! Yes, get it! But Tiro Hatton buries it from long range. That's what we're used to seeing out of the European players. What a huge moment for him. Hatton, who came up big in the final hole yesterday to scratch out the half, buries it from 33 feet. That's his second birdie in the last four holes. He made a 10 further at 11, but this was unexpected. To tie it and stay one up over English and Fina. Harris English looking over a long birdie try here at 15. His partner, Tony Fina, is up pretty much stone dead. It hasn't been given. Earl Hatton missed the green left and a really poor lie and hacked it out on the green. No! No! One. A little short, a little wide. Lowry, who has been fantastic today. From some 35, 40 feet of the right of the hole. No, that's dead. Par 5, 16th. Playing uh, considerably different now, later in the day. Uh, very reachable in two for virtually everybody, John. 239 total. A lot of crosswind, maybe a touch of help. Lowry in the fairway. Tony Finau is in a fairway bunker left. Hatton left also in a horrible lie. If he's had one weakness today, it's not playing enough on the wind. Starting right at it. Solid strike, turning over a hair at the middle of the green. If this is the right distance, this could be good. Oh, used to land softly, and it didn't. A big forward bounce. And settles down in an area where the players exit the green and walk toward the 17th tee so the grain of the grass will be growing against him make that shot just that much more difficult Lowry two yards closer 237 and Gary he's been incredibly impressive in these crosswinds today Lowry's grizzled when it comes to playing in severe conditions. <laughs> no doubt about yeah, it. Well, <laughs> you can see why he went at Port Rush. This is five iron. Started aiming a little left, trying to cut it back against this wind. This is right at it, boys. Beautiful looking shot there. Three quarter follow through. That's how you do it. Light it down, but let the wind have a chance to affect it as much. Yeah, that was a sight to behold, wasn't it? And then he walked mm -hmm. right through it. Terrell Hatton. And a third shot from just under 160 yards. Missed the fairway, forced to lay up well back, but played a brilliant third shot. Tony Finau also going down the left-hand side of the hole, not having much fun so far. A shorter third shot, though, than Hatton played. And he judged it to near perfection. About those two shots. Nice answer. All right, now live, Harris English, remember his second shot went through the back of the green. John, chance to look at the lie? Yeah, the lie's not too bad. It, you know, sitting down a little bit, but he's got green to work with. The issue is this rise he's got just short of the hole on his left. It's going to turn off that a lot to the right and pick up a little speed. That's, that's the difficulty in this shot, Gary. And there's a good look at the... Uh, 
slope coming into the green that uh, John referenced. So land the ball on an upslope to start, go over the rise and down to the hole. Played, but still races by a good uh, seven or eight feet. Now, right about here, he uh, gives it a little body English. So, Lowry, after the brilliant second shot, will have a putt for an eagle chance to win the hole. This will get them a guaranteed half point if they win this hole. Well, I think they've got to be thinking about full points, Paul, at this stage. Yeah, but, that's for sure. Yeah. That is definitely for sure. They are in big trouble, the Europeans, and they know it. John, a, a, not an overly complicated putt? Really not. There's a lot of flat in it. I think overall it's got a little turn right to left, but at the hole it's very, very flat. U.S. has just dominated the par fives this week, Gary. They've won 20 of the par fives. Europe has only won six of them. It's flipped from 2018. It was the dead opposite. Europe dominated the par fives on the U.S. Well, is this going to reach? It does. Just turns away slightly. Easy birdie. English and Fino both have birdie putts, so a chance to tie the hole. Still got it just outside the hole. Yeah. Tony and Mark Urbanek yeah. saying just yeah. outside the hole. This should have a touch of right to left in it. I think Harris is about the same length, but pretty straight. Let's just move a little bit off that rise we talked about to his left, Gary. The ball is pretty firm. And that will go to double boxes again. Yeah. The lower right, have Jordan Speed with a putt for birdie. And of course, Finau on the upper left at 16, trying to tie the hole. Ten feet. 17, and there is that pesky little bunker at the long par three, 218 yards right now. The Pete Dye just propped up there for the heck of it. That's kind of what it looks like. You get down there and you can't believe that that is actually sitting there. It is an integral part of this hole, and you have to avoid it. You know, in English, one down to Lowry and Hatton. Starting right, turning in. Beautiful line. What a shot by Fina. Lights up the hillside. And there's the whole location, Zing. Seven off that left side, 21 on. He's just sitting there waiting on him. Yesterday, this hole was so difficult, dead into the teeth of the wind. They're hitting three irons into there, and now that right to left, guys, it's a lot less club. What do you think, Kay? Six iron? Also a six iron. He oh. talked to Tony after the shot. Sorry, Woody. They hit it about the same distance. They had a little discussion after the shot. Same shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one's way left. Yeah, that's gone. That is in that uh, infamous area that we saw Jordan Spieth create one of the great highlights in Ryder Cup history. That is down in that bunker along the banks of Lake Michigan. No good. So, Europe possible to close it out here. Another six iron. He's come up big. He has Zinger front nine. He was not in many holes on the back nine. He's played beautifully. Yeah, he came up big yesterday. Shots. 
That could be the difference maker. Who knows? Yep. Meantime, back at 17, Lowry kind of freed up here with a beauty delivered in there by Hatton. A little lower trajectory here for the Irishman. And that's a bullet all the way to the back. Is it going to go down the wall? Oh, oh. it ends up. Oh, no. Stay tuned. We might have another highlight from the wall at 17. <laughs> I don't know if Lowry's going to be able to stand there. I think Shane Lowry would have a better chance of hitting this in the lake than he would getting it on the green. <laughs> okay, so he's going to watch Hatton here, see if he can continue his starring role on this back nine. What Singer, a shot. Not one you can force in there. It's got a lot of speed past the hole. If he were to give this, you know, an extra foot or two past the hole, it will go quite a ways past. We haven't seen a whole lot of this, have we, Woody, where there are guys out and off the green. Let's just partner go first. This is a great chance for Terrell Hatton to come up big one more time. Already made a couple big ones here in the back. How quick was that? You could read his lips. It was so quick. Yeah, it slipped by. He's got a mark out, so already on an island on this hole by himself with Lowry's situation. Harris is going to take a swing at his before Tony goes. The, the thing is, Lowry is still away. Yeah, He's got to decide whether to. <laughs> He's like, do I take a shot at this thing? No, I can't make it. You might as well just pick it up in the interest of time. Let's get out of here. <laughs> He'd have to repel or, or down that Harry bank. Is getting a kick out of it. <laughs> They're going to take a crack at it, it looks oh, like. Oh, okay. Now, we saw Spieth here turn in the highlight of the Ryder Cup earlier. Um, Maybe taking an unplayable and trying to chip in for power. But I don't think you can get it. Can get it up top. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not telling you. Well, if he's still out, why I can't mean, he let? How far is Hatton? Why can't he let Terrell Hatton putt out if he's still out? Why even go through this, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Just go ahead and let Terrell this putt is out. Kind of an unnecessary maneuver here. And I think the fans are recognizing that as well. <laughs> Well, Mark Wilson uh, looks well. Now he's uh, yep. Oh, he's pulling the draw. clock. He's going to be taking an unplayable here. Mark Wilson, the PGA of America rules expert, right? Yes. In this case, he's taking the two club length option, the lateral option, and with the geometry, he really hasn't gone closer to the hole by moving two club lengths to the side and on a little bit of an angle. Uh, he's had the referee Teddy Antonopoulos there with him, and but this is for a one-stroke penalty, so he'll be playing three now. And again, you've got Hatton up there, short range, which just seems a little bizarre. It does, but let's see what happens. We can make a par here. Pretty good effort. So there's the mark of his teammate. And we have the Tyrrell Hatton to just poke that in for the three, but again, you've got Finau with an upcoming birdie attempt, and English has been waiting down there for a while. They've conceded the four to Lowry. Eric Larson giving his man a line now. I still can't see the ball from any camera angle. Woody, I mean, is it just, can he even uh, get it I, out of here? I think he can. Uh, the chances of doing something better than Tony's going to do, one in a million. Not quite in the bunker. I mean, get club on it. English being swarmed by some insects down there to make matters worse. It's mosquito season. Okay, it's like everybody is slowly exiting the stage right here. And leaving it up to Finau and Hatton to finally decide the 17th. Seems like we've been on here for an hour. 
And why not? We're going to give yeah. Harris a chance at his part. Give him a chance at three. <laughs> what? Right. This is painful. <laughs> How long this is taking? <laughs> I'm just taking a look at Tony's putt zinger, and it is almost straight up the draw. It might have a hair of left to right in it, but it's not a lot. Well, he's had plenty of time to get ready to hit it, that's for sure. Concede that bogey putt as well. Maybe. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. You can get Pete out here who's got a relatively easy putt as Captain Stricker has watched the proceedings. Harris did put a mark on it, so no gimme there. Right. Yet. You know, why would you after all of this, right? <laughs> you never know. Tyrrell's got quite a bit left, but like we said, Tony's putt, not a lot in it. The trick here, back into the wind, up the hill at this point in the, in the match, so much pressure, you've got to just free yourself up, make sure you give it a chance to get there. Very Fina, slow putt. Yeah, Fina feels like he's been waiting 45 minutes for this birdie attempt. I ran into him last night, actually, in the parking garage, and he was so excited to be here and so excited to get through that first match yesterday. Said the anxiety leading up to it was pretty tough, but once the bell rang, he was good to go. And now from 24 feet. Okay, still a little cleanup left here for Hatton. Here's Hatton for this par to tie it and keep the one up lead for him and Lowry. With one to play, looking for the full point. Guaranteed a half point. And Finau, English, one down here. Got to win the hole to get the half point. This one's headed way right. Oh, he looked at his driver like he thought it was cracked. It must have made a weird sound. Certainly a weird shot. He looked right at the driver. Yeah, they'll crack every once in a while. We've seen it. Yeah, that put some pressure on Harris English here to deliver. And Zinger, I don't think through is an issue right now. It is very cold, cool out here, and the wind is straight into you. I just don't see it getting through right now. Yeah, yeah you see the wind yesterday off from the left at 15, and then now right, as Woody described, into at about gusting to 20. Well, I think they moved the tee up for fear that the players wouldn't reach the fairway here. This is up the right. This is going to need to get down as well. Oh, they're in big trouble. Those are going to be very difficult. Finau almost impossible. That's a severe downslope. Okay, on the tee at 18 is Hatton, where the Americans not in the best of shape at all. So a good chance to hammer this first victory home for somebody other than Garcia and Rom. And that's a good start to it at 18. Yeah, that's still miles back. Got it. A double teamer here with Hatton and hit a good drive. He's got to carry. And it's got to go. Oh, man, that is just, that's a killer. He's going to have to be really lucky if he wants to be participating in this hole. And Finau from a tough spot. Woody. 255, kind of a driving iron right back into the wind. You've got to be brave to stand there. Right over the cameraman's head, it looked like. Really good contact. He's watching it. Well, he's going to have uh, about 40 yards. Here's the spot for Harris English talking things over with his caddy Eric Larson. 212 out of the rough and Zinger the key to this I think make Hatton beat you right now. Get keep the ball in play on the green in the bunker anywhere right. This is a tough shot from anywhere. Yep. If you've got two balls up there with a chance for par and make Hatton hit as many pressure shots as you can right now. Have a chance to get this nicely on the green or, or what, he, he, Woody? He does. It's 212, but at this angle, it's more right to left. And it should be sweeping in right to left with the wind and the stance. So he does have a chance. It would be an unbelievable this shot, but he does have a chance to get it on the green. There's just no green to work with. Online with the flag. It's got miles no. to the right. 
can't really go right at this. If you do, it better be all care. Sweeping, it's going right at it. It's going to have to get up, I think. English staring at it. What a shot. It just a hair too long. That would have rolled all the way back down. That flag sitting in a low area, but just so far away. He'll be thrilled with that. Absolutely. Just kind of did hit into the slope behind the green there. Just slowed it down just enough. Well, he did just what Woody was saying. He put the heat on Hatton now. I mean, this hole, you just look at it. You look at the hole location. <laughs> That's why it's played the toughest at the PGA Championships that have been here. Yeah. All right, so here we go. One up here, Terrell Hatton. Great spot here, Woody. Just needs to hit it on the green, huh? Anywhere on the green would be fantastic. Probably a little bit long and right of this pin is what he's aiming for. 190 total. His partner pretty much out of the hole unless he catches a great lie. Good strike. This is headed left, though. Uh oh. He's turning this over too much, I think. Oh, no. Going to be in the middle, slightly on the downslope. That, I'll tell you what, that's going to be a challenge. Already pitched out of 18th, and this was it. It just didn't have the position to give that a go. So he'll take his chances from there with his partner Hatton down in the bunker. And so now the third shot for Lowry from 165. In that bunker to the left of the green that you see. He needs to pull a rabbit out of a hat here. I'll be right. Go. Chirping it. at it. And he loves it. And he's got a great Let's chance go. to save par. Hatton with this third shot. Tony Finau just played his pitch shot about 20 feet short of the hole. Hatton with a little downhill lie. He's got to play this out a little bit to the left, I believe. Yeah, it breaks hard to the right. He's got to get this first bounce to be predictable. Totally hit it heavy. This guy's a good bunker player. It just shows you the significance of what this means, and that is just pure up pressure. Okay, Harris English taking a close look at this back collar here, Woody. Yeah, just straight down the hill, no break whatsoever. He's got hybrid out, and, and the only thing that concerns me with hybrid, these can come out a little hot sometimes, and this is very fast. Do this unless he's practiced it. There's just too much on the line here. No question, Paul. Just get it started. And now looking for the break to the right, trying to snap it off. It's going to drift down the right to ways. Yep. All in all, pretty good. Barely touched it. I'd say that was really good. It's an uncomfortable feeling hitting anything that soft when you have to go through that much of the tall grass before you get to the green. We've got Finau with a par attempt to be made, obviously, before English, but Hatton's going to play here for his par. Hatton will play first, and I think it would be crazy for Tony to even hit his putt. He's on exactly the same line as Lowry is. Just to win the match here if he makes it. One chance to win the match gone for Europe. And so English for par. Finau, even though he's away. So that's the par for the U.S. And it'll be up to Lowry, who had to play it out and lay up after finding the bunker off the tee to try to get the full point. Lowry in a tough spot. He knows what he's got to do, Dan. There's only one thing here. Is you got to hold it, Woody. Yeah, it's such a smart decision by the Americans having Harris go there. You would have given Lowry a great look at it. And Lowry called making this Ryder Cup team the greatest golfing moment of his career. This is a guy that won the Open Championship. The moment he got that call from Patty Harrington as a captain's pick to follow in the footsteps of his captain, and Darren Clark, and G-Mac, and Rory. This for par to win the match from 10 feet away. This is why he was picked to hold this putt. Yeah! And Shane Lowry delivers. And finally, 
somebody other than Garcia and Rom has won a match. What a guttural reaction that is just poured out of his heart. He's almost apologetic to Tony Finau about it. Holy cow, the emotions. To watch another Ryder Cup video, click here. And to subscribe, click here.